My mom, however, did not play into any of this. She didn't want to inflate my ego. She didn't want to set me up to be let down. Because of this, I knew what I had to do. Get out there and prove to the people who thought I was awesome that I was. And prove to the people who weren't convinced I was special that they were wrong. And so began a long journey full of trying to find purpose through validation. I worked my ass off for years until I found myself one day in the throes of adulthood, trophyless and unsure of whether I would ever get to the places I wanted to go, the places I thought I was supposed to be. What life did I think I was supposed to be living, though? Well, one that made my parents proud, one that made my peers envious, one that elicited applause in the form of likes and comments online, one in which I could check off all the boxes on the life timeline that society had ingrained in my head. One day, in my late 20s, I took a good look at my life. To me, it still seemed average. Years of school had led me to a good job at a good company, but I wasn't making as much money as I thought I would be, and I wasn't getting the recognition I thought I deserved. I was in a serious, long-term relationship with a good guy, but I wasn't married and getting ready to have kids like I thought I would be at my age. I had friends I saw often, but not as much as I thought I would, which made me constantly panic that everyone is mad at me and or that no one likes me anymore. And according to my BMI, I was still overweight just slightly further from the obese side of the equation, but not where I thought I'd be after developing a healthier lifestyle. But what was so wrong with my life that I didn't get recognized by Forbes 30 Under 30 as one of the brightest young stars in the world? That I wasn't ready to have kids like I had told myself I would be by this age? That some stupid calculation factoring only weight and height was telling me I looked a certain way when I was actually quite fit, strong, and happy with the way I looked, that I was average, nothing was wrong with my life. I woke up in the morning, I went to work, I paid bills, I had friends, I had a love life. So fucking what if I wasn't at the adult version of the top of my class when it came to these things? So fucking what if people weren't telling me what a great job I was doing at life? I was doing good enough. I was doing awesome. The notion that average is bad is something society has bestowed upon us. We think we're special. We think we're important. And when we don't get remarkable recognition for our talents, we assume we have failed. We have no in-between here. It's sensational success or distressing defeat. A major part of this is the result of the narcissism epidemic, the problem in which people have unreasonably high expectations for their lives. It has been reported that well in the 1950s, 12% of college students described themselves as important. By the 1980s, that number had risen to 80%. Not only do people and their parents think they are important and deserve only the best, but they simply cannot handle it when they don't appear as impressive as their peers. Some people go out of their way to make themselves stand out from the crowd by hiding the unexceptional parts of their lives around others and on social media. Many of them become depressed. A study from the University of Pennsylvania found that social media is a cause of this. The researcher wrote, when you look at other people's lives, particularly on Instagram, it's easy to conclude that everyone else's life is cooler or better than yours. And when people think that everyone else is doing better than they are, it is easy to decide they are lower than average, even though they thought they were supposed to be special. This obsession with obtaining perfection has made people believe that average is an insult that it is something that equates with failure. After all, when people believe...